WCBI News at 6 starts now. Thanks for joining us for this special edition of March Madness on WCBI News, uh, or WCBI News edition of March Madness. Absolutely. Uh, another dog <laughs> attack sends one man to the hospital, this time in Union County. Sheriff Jimmy Edwards says a man was attacked inside his home by three dogs he was caring for this morning. The man received minor injuries. All three pit bulls were put down. This is the second time in a week a pack of dogs has been responsible for attacking someone. The recent attacks potentially shine more negativity on the breed that already has a reputation for being aggressive. Our Joy Talley learns more about the breed and the behavior of the dogs. She's joining us in the studio. I spoke with an animal behavioral specialist and a pit bull breeder earlier today. I found out more about what drives do dogs to be aggressive and ways to prevent it. Both dog experts say pit bulls aren't that much different than any other breed of dog. As far as aggression goes, really any dog has the potential. Dr. Christine Calder is an animal behavior expert at Mississippi State's vet school. She says there are certain medical conditions and emotions that could cause dog aggression more likely to happen, such as pain, discomfort, skin problems, and other diseases. She also says dogs communicate by body language cues. We miss or we don't recognize, and so our dogs tolerate a lot from us. You know, they really, there's many dogs that really don't like hugs and there's many dogs that don't like kisses and it can be to a certain point where they'll tolerate that and then maybe they have an ear infection or they have a toothache and so their irritability level is much higher and then they're much more likely to bite at that point. The animal specialist says many different factors play a role in how dogs behave. Early learning experience, their environment, socialization and how they're raised. Started learning where these dogs derive from, what they use them for, what, um, what temperament they had and these dogs was never meant to be mean toward human, you know, so a lot of stuff is, is, is caught and taught. So you have to be careful um, what you teach your dog or what they go through and what they see. Orlando Ware has owned Agape Kennels for 10 years now, but his love for dogs and the pit bull breed has always been in his DNA. And now he's passing that same care on to his daughter, who has been around dogs since she was born. Most of them are American bully now, but you know, the pit bull terrier is part of our breed. So we, we stand up for our breed and we just want people to know that these, these dogs are good dogs and they want a lot of love and a lot of attention. So you have to be willing to put the time in it, do your background, do your homework on these dogs to make sure this is a dog for you. Before Ware started the kennel business and got involved in showing his dogs for competition, he trained police dogs. Hey, Floyd! The behaviors that you don't want, you have to be able to stop. So training is very important at early age, six weeks, eight weeks, ten weeks, you need to start training these dogs. You need to do socialization. You need to take them out, have them around different environments so they get to know that everything is okay. Where's well, very first pit bull lived to be 19 years old. The man attacked in Union County near Myrtle suffered cuts on his body from the dog attack. The sheriff says the man was released from the hospital after getting stitches. Three people are facing charges in Monroe County in connection to a home break-in earlier this month. Deputies arrested Chad Caldwell and Eric Caldwell, both 25, and 29-year-old and Jessica Moore this morning. Investigators believe they broke into a home on Highway 45 on March 8th, stole several items, and vandalized the house. Tips led investigators to the trio. All three are charged with one count of burglary of a dwelling. Uh, along with grand larceny and malicious mischief. They're in the Monroe County Jail awaiting arraignment. To the state capitol now where Governor Phil Bryant signs Mississippi's heartbeat bill into law. The two-term Republican held a signing ceremony this morning at the state capitol. Bryant says he's not worried about lawsuits that are sure to be filed against one of the strictest abortion laws in the nation. Under the legislation, abortions would be outlawed once a fetal heartbeat can be detected. That's usually about six weeks into pregnancy. There are exceptions for medical emergencies. New York-based Center for Reproductive Rights calls it, quote, blatantly unconstitutional and says it will sue Mississippi to try to block the law from taking effect July 1st. The interim chancellor at Ole Miss says the university will move a Confederate monument that is currently on campus. Student and campus employee organizations have voted to remove the statue 
from its current site on University Circle. University leaders met with the Mississippi Department of Archives and History and the institutions of higher learning to discuss the steps, rules, and regulations for removing the monument. Approvals will take some time. Interim Chancellor Larry Sparks did not provide a timeline for the move or a possible new location for the statue. MUW plans to tear down two buildings to make way for a new culinary arts institute. The university made the announcement today at the Institution of Higher Learning Board of Trustees meeting. Taylor and Kern Halls would be demolished. W leaders believe it will cost about $2.9 million to remove the buildings. More details about the projects and the new culinary arts institute are expected to be released next week by the university. The Lifeway Christian Store in Tupelo will close this spring as the company announces it's shutting down all of its brick and mortar stores nationwide. Lifeway is the publishing division of the Southern Baptist Convention. It is the largest Christian retail chain in America and plans uh, to shift all of its offerings to the internet earlier this year. The SBC announced plans to reduce Lifeway locations because of declining sales. But the decision was made to close all of the stores. The Tupelo store opened in 1999. It is expected to close by the end of May. Time now to turn things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. He joins us with a first look at our forecast. Hey, Joey, right now a live view with our Alpha Insurance Camera Network. Look at all that blue sky, some sunshine here on our Thursday afternoon. What a great day we've had around here. Uh, we're around 60 or the mid 60s here in North Mississippi and North Alabama. Just off to our south, a little bit warmer, a bit breezy out there, but nothing we can't deal with. Now, as we go throughout the evening and tonight, we'll cool down again, so that winter chill hangs on. Mid to upper 30s for lows. The wind will relax a little bit here, mainly clear. For your Friday, bright sunshine, picture perfect. Back into the upper 60s. I'm back with your weekend forecast in just a few minutes. It has been a wet winter. Heavy rains and flooding have left soggy fields behind. Now farmers are looking to see if their fields are ready for actual planting. Our Riley Livingston takes a look at how the farms and farmers are doing. She joins us live from one of those fields with more. Riley. A couple weeks ago, I took a look at how those recent rains and floods were impacting farmers and fields like this one. At the time, they weren't sure what those impacts might be. Now today, as March is coming to a close and planting season is upon us, they have a better look of where they stand. The cover crop is gone, the sun is out, and farmers are looking forward to planting. At this point, uh, we're a lot better than we were two or three weeks ago. Most of the growers have their burned down herbicides applied on their corn, soybean, and still a little bit left on their cotton. But pretty much this past week, we had a real good week of drying. The sun came out, the temperatures elevated a little bit, and uh, got a little bit more excitement in the growers. Those rising temperatures are good news, but farmers are still facing some possible setbacks. The biggest issue is trying to get our corn planted, and we want to get it planted in March and 1st of April. So, so we're still a little cool. The soil temperatures are cool at this point. We're still wet in some areas. So even though it's drying out, some on top is still gummy and wet and cold down below where that seed will be placed uh, when it's time to plant. And it's not just the wet soil causing issues. It's hard for an airplane pilot to fly on herbicides, so therefore that's a challenge to us. The, the fields are wet, so we can't put a tractor in those fields, so we need an airplane. And they're very helpful at this time of the year putting these broadcast applications of herbicide out. So it has been a challenge because you you want to keep the product on the field and not any, uh, on any other properties. It's been windy pretty much every day. It makes it difficult putting out some type of herbicide. Even with the setback, some farmers are going ahead and getting started. We have a few acres of corn planted. Some are looking at their neighbors and they see them planting and they wonder should they plant. But this is very few acres scattered around. Some are still wet. People are still worried about the temperature. And the temperature basically uh, is, is uh, the seed is a reflection of the temperature. And if temperatures are cold, the seed will not grow. Reginelli tells us they are optimistic about this upcoming season. Last year, they were pretty much in the same boat, colder temperatures and wet weather. Reporting live in Lowndes County, Riley Livingston, WCBI News. 
All right, Riley, thanks so much for that report. The Mississippi Emergency Management Agency is helping tornado and flood victims with rental reimbursement. MEMA says the temporary housing assistance program is for anyone impacted by storms from February 19th through the 24th. It helps residents who were displaced for at least 72 hours from their homes due to the storm's impacts. The program is designed to provide temporary housing for owners and uninsured renters who don't have a place to stay. Now, you can go to a center in Columbia or Saltillo beginning tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. There are a number of documents you'll need to apply. You can find those and a phone number on our website, WCBI.com. The centers will open 10 to 7 Monday through Friday and 9 to 6 on the weekends. And just a reminder, you do not have to live in Columbus or Saltillo to qualify. It's never too early to plan your future. When we come back, we meet some Tupelo Elementary students doing just that. WCBI News at 6 with Andrea Self and Joey Barnes. Welcome back, everyone. There were firefighters, police officers, doctors, even television news reporters at a Tupelo Elementary School today for College and Career Fair Day. It was the first ever college and career fair for Rankin Elementary. The fourth grade math teacher there, Amber McFarland, wanted to bring professionals in to talk with students and give them some ideas about what the education and training is that they need for various careers. I want to help reinstill a love of learning and say, hey, if I keep doing well in school, I can become an engineer, I can become a lawyer, I can be a fireman, I can be a police officer, I can be whatever I truly want to be. And our very own Quentin Smith was one of the professionals at the career fair. The school hopes to make this an annual event. A contestant in the state's upcoming Miss Outstanding Teen Competition is helping local students raise awareness about Down syndrome. Evans Rat made a visit to Heritage Academy in celebration of World Down Syndrome Day. The students paid $1 to wear fun socks or to dress down today. They could also get an autograph photo of Rat. All money raised will help supply learning tools for schools that teach children with Down Syndrome. The 21st day of the third month was selected to signify the triplication of the 21st chromosome, which causes Down Syndrome. Well, spring is here, so why not spruce up your landscaping with some colorful plants? Keith, I know you've been wanting to do this. Startwell High School's Future Farmers of America chapter is hosting its annual plant sale. The event is a fundraiser for the horticultural group, and it features a variety of ornamental plants, all grown by the students. The sale is open to the public Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturday from 11 a.m. and no, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. This is all at the Millsaps Vocational Center on the Startwell High School campus. Lots to choose from, Keith. Hey, they look good. I need perennials, though. I don't want to plant anything uh, or uh, something every year, but uh, those look really nice. I actually have to do some yard work this uh, weekend, too. Uh, this evening, mainly clear. 40s by this evening, mid to late evening, 30s tonight. Your full forecast next. CBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. 548 on our Thursday afternoon, soon to be evening, a great day. Tons of sun, a bit breezy, some friendly cumulus clouds out there. That was a live view at Durham's Pharmacy in Vernon. And look at Mr. Sun right there. A fantastic afternoon here. Speaking of the sun, we'll do it again tomorrow. Bright sunshine, picture perfect for your Friday. 
The wind from the northwest 5 to 10 sustain, probably not as gusty as what we had today. An area of high pressure is scooting on in, and that will help relax the winds a little bit. But temperature-wise, mid to upper 60s around our region, if you're lucky, maybe a shot at 70. Not just here, but in all of the deep south. We are looking at sunshine, 60s, 70s closer to the Gulf Coast. Let's talk about the beach forecast. Maybe you will be venturing on down the Biloxi Gulf Shores or Destin. We're looking at some upper 60s to low 70s Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. One of those great beach weekends. Not too bad here as we get into the weekend. Temperatures for the next few days will be warming up to around 70, give or take. We may pop a little bit higher than 70 as we go through time here, but we'll just average things out about 70 for the weekend with another shot at some cooler air by next Tuesday and Wednesday. When will it hit 90? Now that we are in the spring, yes, that is a possibility. The earliest 90 degree temperature in Tupelo, April 7th, 1948. Starkville, March 20th, 1907. Columbus, March 11th, 1911. So it's in history hit 90 uh, sooner than where we are right now, but the average is in early to mid-May. So let's just hope we don't really get ensconced into that heat and humidity anytime soon because once it gets here, you know, it just lingers forever and forever. But many folks want it to warm up, especially at night. These overnights are still relatively chilly. Notice all the clear sky we have right now. There's our, this is our next disturbance out here across the uh, Rockies. Uh, there's actually a little bit of thunder and lightning showing up there in Utah, but that system will get closer to us Saturday, and we may see a few showers by Sunday, a better chance into Monday. So a lot of sun for our Friday and a good chunk of Saturday. As we get into your Saturday afternoon, this is 3 o'clock, we'll start to see some of those clouds spill on into, your, into our area. Uh, by Sunday afternoon, uh, know that there's an opportunity for a little bit of shower activity, probably across northwestern Mississippi, but uh, can't rule it out. More clouds Sunday versus your Saturday, and a better chance for some showers and a few storms as we get into your Sunday. Here's your AccuWeather 70 forecast. So our next best chance for some showers and storms, maybe late Sunday into Monday, and then some nice weather as we get into the middle of next week. The Bulldogs are busy in California. For the first time since 2009, we're talking Mississippi State in the NCAA tournament. More from San Jose next in sports. WCDI Sports with Tom Evel is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. Welcome here to San Jose, California, the site of the 2019 East Region, if that makes any sense, NCAA Tournament right behind me. Hey, check it out. It's the Mississippi State Bulldogs getting in some free throw work here in San Jose. I'll take a step back here so everyone can catch a look at Mississippi State practicing for the NCAA for the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2009. The Bulldogs just getting here, just wrapping up their practice. As you can, if you can see on the shot clock, it's about 10 minutes left of practice here for Mississippi State. I was able to talk to some of the guys, Quindary Weatherspoon, Eric Holman, just about how they've been able to grasp the emotion of this week being in the tournament for the first time as seniors. Both of them said, yeah, it's a fantastic feeling, but we want to win some ball games and possibly be that Cinderella. Also, that 5-12 matchup. It's been well known and well documented, the 5-12 upsets that have happened over the past couple of years. It's been a guarantee in the tournament for the past couple of years. I spoke with some of the guys about that as well. We'll have more coming up at 10 from Mississippi State and how they're preparing for the Liberty Flames for coming up tomorrow, that matchup for the first round. But about 2,000 miles away, the Mississippi State Bulldogs women's basketball team preparing for its first round matchup against the Southern University Jaguars. Mississippi State putting in some work today, getting ready for that matchup. Head coach Vic Schaefer and company getting ready to begin its next path to a possible third straight Final Four appearance. One of the big reasons why the Bulldogs are a one seed again in the NCAA tournament and real Howard a lot was made about starter changeover and what was going to happen but Howard has injected life into the Bulldogs and another big reason why they're a favorite I think the coaches believed in me and that was a big part and they allowed me to to do what I came here to do and they've given me that confidence and I really needed that in order to to show what else I can do besides rebounding she gets a lot of credit and I think her teammates get a lot of credit. You know, there's been been some patience, but at the same time, you know, I think, you know, when she came here, she's, she was very clear. I want to win a championship. 
and I want somebody to help me get ready for the next level. And I think we've done that. Coming up at 10, we'll recap everything in March between Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and Hale State Hoops. We'll see you then. Reporting here in San Jose, Tom Mebel for WCBI Sports. We'll have a last look at your forecast next. WCBI Sports coverage of the NCAA Tournament is brought to you by Wade Incorporated. Bank First, a better way to bank. And visit Columbus, the city that has it all. Pretty nice weather here for our Friday, Saturday as we get into the weekend. Sunday, a good chunk of the day is going to be okay. There may be a few showers around, but uh, there you have it as we get into the weekend. Not bad. For our YNR fans, it'll be back on Monday uninterrupted. <laughs> That's right. That's the most important. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> have a good night.